Welcome back to the Slide Podcast. I'm your host, Coach Heron, and I am joined by Coach Allie. How are you doing, ma'am? I'm doing great in sunny Southern California. What about you? You know what? The weather's getting better over here, but the pollen is insane. Do you know what pollen is being on the West Coast? I do know what pollen is, but we got some smog here in LA that I know a little bit more than pollen sometimes. Well, yeah, I don't even know. I mean, yes, I do know what it is, but I don't think we experience that over here. So I'd trade you though. You can have all the snow and the ice and the cold weather. Take your snow back. I'm done with it. (laughs) So baseball started back. Spring training's back. What's that look like for you, Allie? I mean, I went out there last weekend, hung out, watched some games. I'm really excited to see the young boys back. The kids being kids out there on the ball field, getting the fundamental training. And then they just have fun at the game. So that's what it's all about. And they're out there making TikTok videos with fans as well. So it's cool to see. Well, that's good. I like to see more fan player interaction. I think that's what will really help grow the game again the way it was. So, well, no further delay. We're going to get into who our superstar guest is tonight. But for those of you that's listening for the first time, we're the Slide Podcast. So we're dedicated to youth baseball, making sure that players get the recognition they deserve, that we encourage them, we inspire them to be better human beings. And so sit back and enjoy a phenomenal show that I know we're going to have tonight. So our guest tonight is like social media superstar. He is infielder, catcher, pitcher, baseball content creator, and this is my favorite one, the dugout hype man. Mateo, the baseball kid. How are you doing, sir? Good. How are you? We're doing great, man. So I've seen all these videos, all this crazy stuff that goes on. You enjoy doing all that stuff? I love it. Yeah? It's my passion. I love it so much. All right. So let's start there. You said baseball is your passion. Yes. Tell me, how old are you, first of all? Ten. 10. So 11 this year. Okay. All right. How long have you been playing baseball? I've been playing ever since I was four for T ball. Okay. All right. And have you always played in your, the right age group or did you ever play up any? Cause you look like the kid that played up a little bit. I've played up before many times. I am when I play on this team called SoCal and when they first joined, I was 10 U and they, the team that I was playing with was 11U, so I was playing up, but I was good enough to be on the team for a 10-year-old. Wow, pretty yeah. awesome. So tell everybody where you're from. I'm from California. California, so you're right near the Los Angeles area, right? Yeah. So you're the movie star. You're near the Hollywood Hills, maybe. I guess, I've never been to California, so you looking at me like I'm crazy, so it must not be close. No? Hollywood's like 30 minutes away. Oh, okay. Well, for me, it's like 2,000 miles, so you're close. I don't know. When you say Los Angeles, really means like 100 square miles, and then you say SoCal, and that's all the way down from like Bakersfield to San Diego, we'd consider. So you think Hollywood sign is near, it's a little rough. Well, see, I've always referred to SoCal as more of the San Diego area, more of lower state, and I've never considered Los Angeles to be SoCal. So I'm learning something. All right, Mateo, dude. All right, so we got a lot of questions for you, and I want you just to share everything with everybody, okay? Because, dude, I am so excited to get to talk to you tonight. I'm 45 years old, dude, and I am excited to talk to you. So you play on two baseball teams, right? So you play SoCal Baseball Club. Yes, and I also play for 310 Baseball. What's 310? 310 is because it's our area code. Uh huh. <laughs> okay. That was a trick question. I was going to see if you knew that. So I'm a big Miami fan, so we're all about the 305. So even though I'm South Carolina. All right, so I understand that you think you have some funny things to say about parents and coaches that get a little crazy during games. Yep. Tell me what you see out there in California. Well... I see crazy baseball, travel ball moms that are like, why isn't my kid playing at shortstop? Why is he always in the outfield? Like, like, (laughs) why is my kid not pitching? Why is he always on the bench? Or why is he always at first base? Like, why? I need to know this. And also, like, I'm not saying all coaches are bad. I'm just saying, like, when I play teams, like, some coaches might be really crazy, like, ring chasing coaches. Like, come on, kids. Today, we are going to win a read today. Let's do this. <laughs> what did you call them? What kind of coaches? 
Ring chasing coaches. Ring chasing coaches. That's funny. Dude, I'm going to tell you, if you have a fan club, I'm going to subscribe. So now do you see these moms acting like that at the field? Or Not do all people the time, just... but yeah, mostly, mostly. Yeah. Like, what would you say to them? If you were the coach, how would you handle that? Because that's a hard situation for some coaches, right? They don't know what to say. What would well, you say? I'd probably say, well, see here, Mateo is like way better than your kid at shortstop. So he plays there. And first of all, all your kid does is literally just watch the flies pass by and talk about the spiders while the game is going on when they're on offense or when they're fielding or like picking rocks or they're picking out the grass or talking to himself it's about the latest video game. Dude, I, or building sandcastles. Like also, they need to work harder. They need to work way harder because I see them and they don't work hard enough. Well, how much do you practice and work on playing baseball? I probably only have like one day off every week. And it's fun that I play baseball almost every single day of the week. And it's great. And I get all this inspiration to work hard every single day from Jackie Robinson. Because like back in the 40s and 50s, segregation was really, really bad. And it was really impressive to see a black person make it to the MLB, especially with all the things he like had to push through all of that things like i watched the movie 42 and it really 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 shows and also that's like what gets me to work hard but also kobe bryant also teaches me to work hard because while all the other players are sleeping he's working out he probably wakes up at three or four o'clock he works out for two hours eats breakfast and then works out for another two hours and that's when the guys show up and so basically it's like while they're chilling he's working that's right when you decide to take a break, there's somebody out there already working. There's somebody that's always working. The key is to have some balance, right, Allie? Yeah. Allie, Especially like, here in Los Angeles. I think there's a lot of things to do out there, I believe. So you got to enjoy that. Yeah. But Allie, what do you think about this dude? I think Mateo's my new best friend. He just named two Los Angeles legends right there without even prompting it. So, I mean, Jackie Robinson and then Kobe Bryant. Who's next? Is it Mookie Betts or are you a Clayton Mookie Kershaw Betts. fan? Mookie Betts. I might not be an Angels fan, but Mike Trout. There's a He's lot. an L.A. legend. Mike Trout is a SoCal L.A. legend because the Angels want to claim SoCal. So what about Shohei Otani? What do you think about that guy? Same thing with him. He's a great pitcher. Pitcher? Will you be a fan of him wherever he goes? I mean, I don't really watch the Angels. I'm not I like that big of a fan of them, but... Their players are pretty good, and Michelle Tani, he's a really good pitcher. Did you, you see, see him the... drop two bombs yeah. today? Yeah. And from, from one knee? knee? He must be a superhero or something that I don't know about with, like, some superpowers because I've never seen anyone drop to one knee and still hit the ball 420 feet. Now, granted, I haven't seen as many people as probably you, Mateo, but that's pretty incredible. So – Allie, what questions you got for this dude? Because I know, like, you guys share a lot of similar interests in the Dodgers and the area. What do you got? All right, well, one to start. What's your favorite position to play on the field? Well, I can play everywhere, and I love baseball overall. But if I, I had to be honest, I mostly play, and I think I'm best at middle infield, so, like, shortstop, second base, and catcher. I can also pitch pretty well, too. But if I had to be in an MLB and let's say I can only pick two positions to play in, I'd probably play shortstop because just think about it. Second base is basically like the Robin of Batman and that Batman is shortstop. <laughs> Dude, I see the same thing. I get that. I get where you're going. Yeah. Like that makes sense to me. It's like the sidekick. Who and taught you that? Did you come up with that or did your mom up come that. up with that? I'm being honest. I actually came up with that. You know what? That'd be a cool t-shirt. I mean, no offense to any of the second baseman out yeah. there, but second base is the Robin to the Batman. I think that'd be pretty cool. You could put like Batman on the shortstop side of the bag, second base, and then Robin. Yeah. You don't even have to say anything. You just put their pictures there. <laughs> yeah. It makes sense. But also catcher too, because I also love catching. It's just a really cool position. Like you could see the entire field and it's like you're part of everything. It's not like you got to rep every 30 or 15 minutes. So always like catching the ball or you're blocking or trying to throw somebody out. And that's also really fun. You're also like the leader of the field in both of those positions. And I'm not hitting on second base. I play second base and I'm pretty good at it. And I mean, I love pitching, but it's like, I don't just want to pitch. Like I want to hit too. Like I want to do all that stuff. I don't just want to just 
pitch. Well, dude, I think Otani is opening the door for a lot of different things coming. Like, you know, to be able to be the starting pitcher and to have an amazing win-loss record and then still hit. How many home runs did he hit last year, Allie? I don't even know. I think he hit he over was, 40, right? I was going to say, it was like 38 the last time I saw it. The yeah, end like of the season, but. this dude's dropping tanks out there. So, Mateo, that's a new word that I use, tanks. Do you use that when you hit a home run, like hit some tanks? I say like dinger or bomb or something like that. Okay. Like, such a dinger, like bomb. I got you. So I learn all the cool stuff from the kids that come on the show. So I'm just now learning like what drip means. I understand you're like the drip king, but I'm trying to learn. So like my bananas hat right here, that's all drip to me. You got the chain. You got a little bit of a chain got, going. Yep, it's not like Mateo's. I, mean, I, I don't got the Mateo chain though, dude. That's some Cuban links you got right there. Well, it's like you look good, you feel good, and then if you feel good, you play good. That's and right. My drip is like usually like probably one skinny chain like this, or then like one larger chain like this one, and then sunglasses. And no, don't wear it on your hat. You're covering your team name. Like it makes no sense. It's not drippy if you do that. Only if you wear it on your eyes. Eye black is optional, but it makes it look drippy. You need to have fresh cleats like. Then 2022 Mike Trout or something like that. Like a good cleats, like drippy ones. Dude, I, I'm going to have to look them up. Now, I love, like, Mike Trout, I need to get me a new glove, and I think his gloves drip. I like that. Dude, you, you got to teach me a lot of stuff. We're going to have to, like, stay in contact because I think I can learn a lot from you. So yeah. who comes up with all the ideas for your videos? Uh, well, I think of the ideas because, you know, what I said earlier about the crazy baseball parents and stuff like that. Uh-huh. I get the ideas and then I tell it to my mom and she tries and find a soundtrack to it to make it like funny. And then I act out like the video was maybe sometimes even with one of my teammates. And uh -huh. then my mom produces the video and that's how they're made. Sometimes my mom might think of the ideas, but most of the time I think of them. Dude, like, see, that's my only thing is like, we need to create more content for our show, but I'm kind of camera shy. <laughs> So, like, I'm not necessarily the person that I want to see my face all the time. Like, you got the whole drip going on. You're a handsome-looking young man. But I don't think people want to look at me like that. So, I'm a little camera shy. But I got to come up with some stuff, though. I, you got to help me come up with some cool content ideas for us to do. You can make a video. Yeah. I need to know what I'm making a video about. Like, I don't have that creativity that you do. Like, hey, we should do this and we can do this. I'm kind of boring like that. So, I need help from and inspiration from people like you. All right, dude. So what do you eat after a baseball game? Well, after a baseball game, I usually go to a restaurant and eat that, like a delicious burger. Or sometimes if my friends are available, like my teammates, then maybe a couple of them could come. And I probably mostly get a burger. And no, not like McDonald's, like through a drive through I mean like a restaurant, like Slater's 5050. I don't think if you heard of that, but it's really good. It would change Oh, Allie life. has. Dude, he just stole my heart. The fried mac and cheese balls that they have at Slater's 50-50. They're know, half great. bacon, half beef burgers. Oh, my gosh. Half yeah. bacon, half beef? Wow. Yeah, yeah. And I also like the bacon burgers. They're, those are also really good. All right, build us your burger right here. Yeah, do What's that. on your burger? The perfect burger for recipe for me is you need a crispy bun. I really don't care about the sesame seeds. In fact, I think that makes it just taste worse. But <laughs> you need a crispy smooth bun with good like crispy like beef and you need to have melted like delicious looking cheese on that with bacon and like maybe two strips or three strips of bacon with some barbecue sounds like it's dripping right there <laughs> literally yeah that's not an in and out burger right there i've that's had in and out one. burger but it just didn't seem special like everybody blows it up because i'm on the east coast like in and outs like this like nostalgic place that you've got to go. And I went and I was kind of disappointed. I got to be honest with you. If I had to pick between In-N-Out and McDonald's or, or In-N-Out or Burger King or In-N-Out and something else, I got to be honest with you, it's probably always going to be In-N-Out. Oh, yeah? Because, I mean, I'm not saying that those places are bad. I think In-N-Out's really, really good. Mm -hmm. like, like picking up something. Do you guys have five guys over there? Yeah. I love some five guys. They're known for pizza out here, not burgers. Really? It is all burgers out here. Really? That's unusual. 
That's weird. I mean, they got burgers, but there's pizza at Five Guys from Italy. This is like a news alert. Like, this just blew my mind. For everyone out there listening, I have never seen Five Guys serve pizza. You got to come right. try Slater's, though. Slater's 50 oh, 50. Yeah. If I come out, Mateo, me and you are going to Slater's 50 50, okay? It's probably the best right. burger ever. But don't forget, there's even more places like The Habit, Shake Shack, if you've ever heard of that. Oh, yeah. I've had some Shake Shack. Cheeseburgers is my favorite food. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, how do you stay so small with you eating all these different burgers and stuff? Come on. I, mean, I bet he works out. What kind of workouts do you do? I play baseball all the time. And sometimes, like, during school time, I like basketball or something because there's no baseball, like, at my school, sadly. And also, I was just eating a bunch of grapes earlier before this. And conditioning. You can't forget about conditioning. Because SoCal, like, if you're not doing good, let's say there's a field, there's a baseball field. If you're not doing good, the entire team has to probably run to, like, there's, like, this little, little field for, like, little kids, and you have to run all the way over there, and the field's ginormous, so, mm-hmm. like, you have to walk all the way over there into one corner, then we have to go all the way into another corner right here, and then we have to go all the way and go across to that corner, and they have to go back, and sometimes you might not even have to do that twice. Dude, yeah. I bet the competition out there is pretty insane, right? There's a lot of competition out here. Yeah. And also, you can't forget about doing bands. Do you do that at home, or do you go to a gym to work out? I do it at home, but also at practices or, like, at games. Before the game or practice starts, I also do bands. Okay. And it helps me, like, feel stretched. Also, arm care. You can't forget about arm care, because if you're, like, a catcher or a pitcher and you mostly throw some most of the time, you need to have arm care after every game. What's your arm care look like? Like, sometimes when I pitch or catch, I just, like, probably grab one of my, like, two gloves or just, like, one pretty heavy glove and I just start lifting it up. Like, mm-hmm. Or I'll do bands because I bring out my bands and during the games, when somebody's hurt in the shoulder or somebody's, like, pitching for an inning and we're, like, hitting, mm-hmm. they use my bands. I really, like, I really don't care. They don't even have to ask me. Gotcha. Now, Allie, do you see this kid playing for the Dodgers in the future? I hope so. He sounds like a good teammate and his work ethic's there. Is that who you'd want to play for, the L.A. Dodgers, when you make yeah. it to the MLB? You mean when I'm going to make it to the MLB? That's right. Yeah. When you make it to the MLB, are you going to be a Dodger, or is there another team you want to play for? So, let's just say in an imaginary war where I don't go to the Dodgers. If I don't go to the Dodgers, i got to say I could do the Yankees because I think wow. that's a pretty good team. And if I can't go to the major leagues at all, Savannah Bananas is what I'd probably do. Dude, I just saw your most recent post. Who came up with that idea? One, you got Aaron's Savannah banana hat over there. But yeah. was your mom coming up with that post or was the bananas idea yeah. all you? My mom thought of that idea. I'm going to have to go watch it. I don't know if I've seen that one. That's the first video on your profile or on your Instagram. I believe it's yeah. pinned. Yeah. I, I got to watch that one again. Who's your favorite banana? I forgot his name. What's his name? Oh, yeah, Dalton. His name's Dalton. And I went to this camp once. Uh, not, I, not your normal baseball camp, did yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. And I met him, and it, he was really cool. He was funny, and he was really cool. You met Tanner Thomas, too. Dalton Malden was yeah. there and Tanner Thomas. Yeah. It was really, really cool. It was awesome. I got those, like, so many people, and it was awesome. I also made a video with a couple of the players and, like, one of the TikTokers. And it was really fun. I saw a couple of videos with them. I took some photos with them. I signed one of my gloves from all of them. It was a really, really fun experience. What did you think about Coach Ballgame? Coach Ballgame, he's really funny. He's good at the drums. He's funny. He made this, like, fun game. And, it like, he got the gems. He's funny. He, he's the one that kind of, like, controlled it. Okay. So he ran, he sort of ran and gave the instruction to all the instructors. That's good because he's great. My son got to go to one of his Sandlot camps last year. So I got to watch him, like, run a camp. And he's crazy. And his memory, like, I bet he remembered everybody's name, everybody's nickname. What was your nickname that he called you? He called me Reese's Puffs. Reese's Puffs. Yeah. Because he asked almost everybody, like, what's your favorite thing to go to? But this time, what's your favorite cereal? And he asked me, what's your favorite cereal? And I said, probably Reese's Puffs. And he said, 
All right, Reese is supposed to your nickname. <laughs> I, my son struggled to come up with a nickname, so he was like, well, what's your favorite football team? And he said, Dolphins. And so that was his nickname, Dolphin. Guess what? We're going to have him on the show very soon. Ooh, that's cool. Yeah. Allie, what do you got for this dude? Bananas. Say you make the bananas. What's your first trick play that you're throwing? My first trick play? It's probably going to be um, so many. It's way too many to think, honestly, but like feels like extension legs that like make you really tall like I remember seeing a video of like a first baseman like with his like extenders make him like extremely tall it's stilts. Like, yeah on like one of the bat- runner's heads well I think we got to come up with something unique for you though like I think by the time that you make it to the Dodgers and then you play and you break all the records at the Dodgers and then you go to the Yankees because I mean you just got to have Yankees yeah. on your resume right yeah, maybe like three, five years, maybe. Yeah. But like Dodgers is probably going to be like 95% of what I'm probably going to be doing in the major leagues. Well, Allie, look, go ahead and tell, like, when you go back, you know, when you start, just go ahead and tell the GM that just write this dude's name down. Like, just go ahead and get the pen ready and sign the check. SoCal just Baseball, 310 Baseball, Mateo, the baseball kid. It's, we got you. Cool. A fun fact is, I think one of the Dodgers actually follow me, and that's not even a joke. I'm being serious. Like on Instagram, really? One of the Dodgers actually follow me Dude, with the blue a... check mark and everything. Yeah, that's a big deal. I know that's big like, league status. So now, last year, I would have been like, "So what?" But now, like, I'm in this world, and I am like a huge fan of yours. If one of those professional players like followed us, I'd be super excited too. So... Like I felt like insane. Like I was like, "Oh my." <laughs> Hey, that means you're getting there. I'm just going to throw it out there. Mateo's got 21,000 plus followers on social media. We have two. We need his help. We have two. We have 2,000. Sorry. I was like, not two followers. Sorry. Hold on. Yeah, we have 2,600 and we have 2,600 or something. So you're right, Mateo. Like, we need the drip to flow over into the slide podcast. So (laughs) we need some help here. We do, ma'am. Well, we're trying. So now if you don't play baseball, like let's just say baseball, you have like this freak injury where you hit this home run and the bat breaks because you hit it so hard and it like hits your head and you get like a back concussion. And you can't play anymore. All right. I'm painting a horrible situation here and I apologize. I'm knocking on wood for you. Yeah, please don't do that. Yeah, I'm knocking too. All right. So what do you do if baseball is not like if you're not playing out on the field, what are you going to do? Be an announcer for the Dodgers, so I'll just be like the next Vince Scully. All right. Now I need to hear some announcements. I've also been an announcer two times for UCLA, and it was really cool. I announced an inning. It was really, really cool. I saw the videos of that. (laughs) Do you get nervous? No. In fact, I didn't get nervous at all because the latest time I did that this year, I made a mistake the first time I said that one of the guys' names, and I was like, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. And then I went again, <laughs> and I didn't feel nervous at all. Hey, but, dude, you know, it's life. We're all going to make mistakes. We're going to make, you know, errors. And you play baseball. You know. Like, you, you, that's how you get better is you keep making mistakes. You get better. Yeah. All right. So give him a couple Dodger names, Allie, and let's hear him, you know, announce them to the plate. All right. I mean, leading off. Mookie Betts, give us the announcement. Mookie Betts, number 50. Leading off, Mookie Betts. I think you're capable of better than that. All right, you got to give me something better, all right? You got to put your chest up. Come on. Leading off, number 50, Mookie Betts. That's it right there. He's got the strong T, that ending Betts. He hits it hard. I like it. I'll have to connect with Allie next time. She'll have to toss you a foul ball or something. Make sure she signs one for you, too, because she's famous, too. Do you know what she does? She helps and has an organization that helps girls play baseball. That's great. That's, yeah. That's awesome. I know. And, like, I think it's pretty incredible. Have you seen some of these girls play ball? Like, some of these yeah. girls are freaking amazing. And, you know, we used to say the whole thing, and Allie, I'm sorry, but we used to say, you play like a girl. And now, that's a compliment. Because some of these girls are yeah. better than I ever was. So, 
you'll have to check Allie out, check out some of these players and maybe even go out and play around when she's practicing and show these girls how to do it. Okay. All right. Introduce them to some swag. But I need to tell you something right now. Okay, go ahead. I'm probably better than most. No, I'm better than all of them. I'm think? just I'm letting you, you know that one right now. I know it might sound a little too cocky, but I like to mess around. Are you think you're better than me? Is that even a question? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is that even a question? Okay, okay. Right. Go ahead. Mateo, what's the fastest pitch you've ever caught before? Oh, I know where she's going with this. It was 66 miles. I used to have this catching coach, and he threw me 66 miles, and I caught it. It happened a couple of months ago. All right, so Coach Aaron thinks that he can get up in his catcher's gear and get out there and catch 90 miles an hour with some movement. You think he can do it? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Really? You got to have a little confidence in me. You were on the Red Sox. Wait, no, 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 my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. My mind got so caught. Like, I got caught in this. My mind just got so, like, into this that my mind just, like, <laughs> flipped things. But that coach was a part of the Red Sox. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Wow. That's pretty awesome. Do you remember his name? Mark. Coach Mark. Mark. Okay. Yeah. Well, look, my goal is I'm going to find a pitcher in our area or we're going to go down to the University of South Carolina. Have you ever heard of the Gamecocks before? Yeah. So we had Meredith McFadden on with us our last episode that we released, and she's the dugout catcher. Bullpen catcher. Bull, I said dugout catcher. I'm so I've messed oh, that. Good. See, my brain got messed up too there, Mateo. So she's the bullpen catcher, and I told her, do you think I could catch some of those balls? And Coach Alley was like, no, no, don't think so. So now I'm challenged. So I'm going to make a video of this when I do it, and I might get knocked out. No, But at least I said, hey, if I get knocked out, maybe it goes viral. Maybe then oh, I can. I was going to say, so yeah. when that 66-mile-per-hour pitch hit my glove, uh, I felt I felt it for like, Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Did it hurt? Where'd you catch it at? In the palm? Here. It hurts oh. so much. And he threw me a pitch before that that was only 64 miles per hour, but I caught that so fine. Like, I, oh, I yeah. did everything. So I think 66 is no longer the limit because that was a bunch of months ago, like yeah. seven, six, five months ago. Yeah. Well, dude, you're going to be catching 90 probably before I get a chance to, so who knows? Catchers are crazy right there. Another one of these catchers here. We got uh-huh. a lot of catchers on this show, Mateo, and all of us just continue to prove that catchers are crazy. Yeah, Allie was a catcher. Still is a catcher. Wow. Yeah. Thank Take you. care of those knees, dude. Sometimes my legs get really tired during games, but I'm the toughest on the field, like, Basically, I could literally be in the outfield or I could be at, like, first base because, like, somehow I ended on first base because, mm-hmm. like, something happened. But I could still be 10 times louder than the catcher and shortstop combined. Well, here's what I want you to do is I want you to go out there on the field and I want you to pump up and motivate the rest of your team. Are they as excited about the game as you are? No, they're not. I mean, like, I'm always a dugout clamped and I'm always, like, when the kid's batting, I'm always like, let's go, let's go, come on. And when they're, like, quiet, when I'm, like, about to go on bat- batting because I'm on deck, I'm like, come on, why is it so quiet? Let's do this, come on. And uh, <laughs> you know what mm-hmm. Dude, I, He's the hype I, man. I want to I wanna come to a game now. I got to watch this. So you'll have to tell your mom maybe one day she can live stream a game so I can watch this. So... Hopefully I'll be out there soon. So we may be working on some things to come out to SoCal sometime this year. All right, dude, this is my favorite part right here. Now I'm going to tell everybody out there, this dude loves 90s hip hop. And and being from the West Coast, he and I have some very similar interest in artists. And look, the walkout song we're going to talk about, because that's what we ask every guest. But do your love of the music is a little bit more in depth than most. So tell us who your favorite artists are. Can I say my top five? Yeah, of course. Well, so number five is probably going to be Biggie. Number four is probably going to be Dr. Dre. 
Number three is going to be either Nos or Ice Cube. Number two is either going to be Nos or Ice Cube. So Nos might be number two, Ice Cube might be number three, or Ice Cube might be number two, or Nos might be number three. And then number one is going to be Tupac without a doubt. I couldn't agree with you more. Like, I was growing up during the whole Big E versus Tupac era. So even though I really liked Big E, I had to hate on him a little bit because I was a Tupac fan. So like, you know, he was like throwing some beef Tupac's way. And for everyone out there listening right now, if you're laughing at me, I apologize. But this was my 90s. So what makes you pick Tupac as number one? Well, he has a pretty large catalog. And also, every single album that he has released has gone platinum at some point. And honestly, if I had to be honest with you, my, probably the best album, like in my opinion, number one is probably going to be All Eyes on Me by him, 1996. For sure. Let me tell you. So I had just graduated high school, I believe. And I was waiting outside of the record store. We had record stores back then. You've probably never seen too many record stores in your time, but like we had to wait outside of this like store for them to open so I could run in and grab all eyes on me. So now have you ever heard the album Me Against the World? Yes. Like that's I love that one. That's also a good album. My favorite's probably All Eyes on Me though. All right. So we had Tupac. Now you had a like a tie between Nas and Ice Cube. Yeah. Like, those are two different styles there. Like, yes. where do you get that? I think Nas is, yes, he is New York, but like, I really, I don't think Illmatic, Illmatic's probably the number four album, but it's probably, I think Nas is like really good. Like, I really like his albums. Like, the ones I really like are probably It Was Written. Illmatic, yeah, yeah. It Was Written, probably I Am, released in 1999, and also Stillmatic and Godson. Those are my favorites. Do you like Wu-Tang Clan? Yeah, but I don't think they're going to be in my top five. No, they would probably be close. Like Method Man may be in my top, he may be in my top 10, but like you look like a Wu-Tang kind of guy. I like Method Man, like Wu-Tang Clan, but it's like, I mean, just like number six, Snoop Dogg, number seven, like probably someone like Eminem, number eight, like Kendrick Lamar. Yes, I listen to Kendrick Lamar. Listen to this dude. Like he's just rattling it off, like it's a like he's re- you got cue cards, like is your mom? He wasn't even born. Signs? He wasn't even number, born in the nineties. I know. Number nine, number nine is probably too short. Number oh, ten. Really? You love too yeah. short? Oh, yeah. I love it, dude. Number number ten better be some salt and pepper. <laughs> <laughs> he might not know who that is. I know. I know salt and pepper. Okay. All right. Who's number ten then? Number 10. I mean, I, I like them, but it's just like, they're not, I feel like. Oh, you don't have to pick them just because Allie said them. She was just messing. Yeah, but probably so many, but if I had to be honest with you, I'd probably pick, oh my gosh, 50 Cent maybe. Okay. 50 Cent. Okay. Uh, I'm not a, that much of a Jay-Z fan, but mm-hmm. he's still good. Like I wouldn't have him on like my playlist. Gotcha. But like, if he's on, I'll, I'll let it play. I wouldn't really care. <laughs> Look, dude, I am so impressed. Like, hey, stay humble. Remember Kendrick Lamar? You know, be humble. Like, yeah. stay humble. Listen to Kendrick Lamar. That's not even, that's not and, even uh, my favorite song by him. It's no? Still, my favorite album by him is probably To Pimp a Butterfly in 2015. That was good. That was a good one. Like, who teaches you all this stuff? Go ahead, Allie. You were about to say the same thing. Yeah, I'm like, one, where'd you first learn about all this good music? And two, that sounds like a really cool baseball team right there. Like, that's a really badass starting lineup right there (laughs) with all those artists. And then you got your DH. And I mean, on the bench for you, you got Snoop Dogg out there in center field. Like, come on. Like, Snoop was amazing. Like, I loved Snoop growing up. Like, just his flow, like... I don't know. I know everybody's out there laughing at me still. Have you ever heard of Scarface? Yeah, Scarface is also good, too. I like Scarface. I told you when we started, we could talk for two hours about this stuff, man. But unfortunately, I know you've got probably some home. You got homework? I finished that already. Oh, there you go. Hey, here's a hard question. How's your grades? My grades are good. Yeah? Well, yeah. 
All right, you were like super like confident about like how great you are at baseball. Dude, is your grade game as good as your baseball game? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. All right, cuz you know you don't get into a college unless you got like a 3.0 at least or a 3.5. So batting average, yeah, batting average is great, but that GPA is where it's at. Yeah. Like you can be an amazing baseball player. You could literally be the best baseball player of all history, but they won't let you into a college like UCLA or something like that if you have doo-doo grades. Where would you think? You keep saying would... UCLA, yeah. Where would you go? Probably UCLA. Yeah. You stay close to so, home. Yeah. He knows the West Coast USC. Aaron knows the East Coast USC with South Carolina. I hear SC and think of the Trojans. But yeah. also – UCLA's got Jackie Robinson Stadium. So, once again, right back to Jackie Robinson, number 42, and I heard that's your number. Yeah. Also, right. number 24 for 310, number 42 for SoCal. Where did you get the 24 from? Kobe. Okay. I, I'm sorry. Look, I'm thinking Ricky Henderson. Like, I'm thinking these, like, West Coast, like, you know, See, I associate Ricky with playing with the Oakland A's, so and he was 24. So I thought he made it. NorCal. Yeah. Well, that's the, that's the Bay. He's all you know. He's about West Coast, so that's he's got to represent the Bay too. But anyway, Mateo, do I, sometimes I get on these like silly rants. So, but it's okay. Hey, dude, before we wrap up, I'm going to ask you our notorious question about your walkout song. Before we get to that, is there anything else you want to tell us and our listeners? Um, well, always like, if you're really passionate about something, stick to your passion. Like if you're, if you're like, really like love this thing and you have a passion about it, work on it. It just won't like happen magically. Like you need to like stick to your passion if you want to make it like really good. Like you have to be like really, really passionate about something. That's right. Well, because, I mean, you know, there's a lot of kids out there that play because their moms and dads want them to play, not because they yeah. want to play. Would I almost probably say you would probably be the one that didn't want to come in at night and stop practicing. Does that sound right? Yeah. Yeah. After, like, I'm um, last weekend, like Saturday, Sunday, like yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, I had a lot of baseball games. But even after those baseball games on Saturday and Sunday, I was still really hyperactive. And I don't even know how that's possible, but I was... Dude, I mean, stay young. I know it because when you get older, you start to lose a little bit of that. So remember all of this time when you, when, as you get older and you're like, man, all that energy that I used to have, like, where'd it go? So <laughs> remember that. All right, dude, we're at the last question now, man. And we're going to wrap up. I know you had some games this weekend. Yeah. What's your walkout song? Boy, and about you, GE and sure to come to find a view. Now, how do you play those, like, which parts of the songs do you play for your walkout song? Or, I mean, do you just play it straight out? Like, do you do, well, like, I a, play it straight out, like the, like, the beginning. Okay. And, yes. They have a lot of cuss words in it, right? Yep. We get the, it's a, the, the clean version. Okay, good, good. But there's a guy in a, a umpire company out there called Balls and Strikes. We had him on the show. Yeah, um, I've heard of that guy, Scott. Yeah, like, yeah. So, and I asked him what his walkout song was going to be, and he said NWA. So, he's a West Coast guy. You got to go with the West Coast. Cool. Allie, are you down with, like, the West Coast stuff? Absolutely. I mean, it's got the good beat, and then I think last year's Super Bowl, yeah. when we hosted the, the halftime show, going back to Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, being up on the rafters and so far, I just, I it, like it brought back a rejuvenation. Yeah. I don't just like hip hop. I don't just like hip hop. I also like funk. Oh and yeah. Like my probably my favorite form of hip hop is probably like G funk. I just like I like hearing it rapping over like a funk beat. Yeah. So you know who Warren G is? Yeah. I saw him in concert. Well, it's been a little bit ago, but I'm all about that G funk. Have you ever heard of the Dove Shack? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I believe you on that one. Have you I really do. heard the Dove Shack? No more time on the LBC. Is that, is yes! That oh, my gosh. Look at this. It just proved you wrong. I did. Have you ever heard of the Twins? Yeah. Round and Round. Wow. Look, I, 
I just want to take a moment and applaud your parents and you know, they're teaching you some good stuff. So like, dude, I got cold chills listening to that. Like I'm impressed. I'm what about spice over one? Here with the beats. All right. What about spice one? Spice one's good too. You know who spice yeah, one I is? Know, I know who he is. Didn't too short side of his career. Yup. He did. What about Aunt Banks? I don't really listen to them that much. All right. So Ant Banks is the producer. So he's the Dre. He was the Dre for Too Short earlier in his career. So, but yeah, Ant Banks is pretty good too. So, all right. For all of our listeners out there, we just took a trip down memory lane. And for Mateo, this is all today's stuff for him. So, but we apologize for getting down the whole hip hop tunnel. But man, why I'm not, here. Mateo? Yeah. Like, why not? I'm just excited to be here, honestly. Yeah. Dude, I, I, we're going to need you to come back, okay? Like, okay. we're going to need you back on the show. I would love to have you back as a co-host with us so you can ask some questions of guests because, I, man, I would love That's to hear that. So That'd be great. All right, I'm ma'am. Curious. All right, so tell us, for everyone out there listening right now, tell us how we can find you on TikTok and Instagram and all those fun things. Just search up Mateo. Uh, underscore the underscore baseball kid and then if you see a kid with smiling with a ucla hat backwards with i think a colored hair i don't know if it was red or blue something like that if you see that that's me all right hey so thank you guys very much for listening to us today again if you have a superstar out there that you would love to have on the show and hear them talk about please reach out to us send us some highlights we'd love to share all of the great things that happen throughout youth baseball throughout the country Allie, we're up you ready all right yeah we're gonna finish it up so mateo here's what we normally do we normally say until next time we'll catch you on the slide all right so we're gonna we're gonna let you do it because I think it would be freaking awesome. So for all of our listeners out there, until next time, Mateo. We'll catch you on the slide. We thank you for toughing it out and pushing through. Now let's go teach the world great sportsmanship, leadership to go inspire someone through your dedication and excitement for the game. Make sure to smash the like and follow button on all social media at the Slide Podcast Show and the Slide Pod on Twitter. Plus, leave us a review and feedback. Until next time. Until next time, we'll catch you on the slide. On the slide.